and welcome to our new video. In today's lecture we will be discussing batch normalization and we will learn how to apply it to train a deep neural network. After finishing the theoretical part we will explain how to implement batch normalization in Python using PyTorch. So let's begin with our video. In order to understand batch normalization first we need to understand what data normalization is in general. When training a neural network, usually our goal is to normalize or standardize our data as part of the pre-processing step. This is the step where we prepare our data to get it ready for training. Normalization and standardization both have the same objective of transforming the original values of a data set to new values and in order to put all the data points on the same scale. A normalization process consists of scaling the, the numerical data down to be on scale from the 0 to 1. Now let's explain this a little bit in a little bit more detail. So suppose, suppose that uh, we have a set of positive numbers from 1 to 100. To normalize this set of numbers we can just divide each number with a la largest number in the data set. In this case, it is a number 100. In that way, our data set has been uh, rescaled to the interval from uh, 0 to 1. A typical standardization process consists of subtracting the mean of the data set from each data point and then dividing the difference by standard deviation of the data set. So basically we take every value x inside the data set and transform it to its corresponding z value using this formula. After performing this uh, computation on every x value inside, inside our data set we have a new normalized data set of z values. The mean of the data set is calculated using the following equation. It is a sum of all values divided by the number of values. To calculate the standard deviation we use this equation. We take the difference between each element and mean, square those differences and then average the result. The standard deviation is just the square root of the result. So we already explained that no, uh, normalizing by dividing by the largest value had the effect of transforming the values of the data set to the inter interval from 0 to 1. And, and as, you can, as you can see, looking at these formulas, the effect of the standardization process is that the mean value of the data set is transformed to 0 and standard deviation is transformed to 1. So why do we do this? Well, in general, the purpose of both normalization and standardization is to uh, put our data on the standardized scale. Uh, if we didn't normalize our data, we may end up with some values uh, in our data set that might be very high and other values that might be very low. For example, let's say that uh, we want to learn how much some company pays its employees. Uh, we have a data set that consists of the uh, company salaries that ranges from highest to lowest. So in this data set we may have someone with a salary of let's say million dollars and someone else with a salary of only one thousand uh, dollars. This data has a relative, relatively wide range and it's necessary uh, and isn't necessarily uh, on the same scale. Additionally, each one of the features uh, for each of our samples could uh, vary widely as well. If we have, for example, one feature which corresponds to the age of the employee and then another feature corresponding to the gender of an employee, uh, we can also see that these uh, two pieces of data will not be on the same scale. So this is a huge problem because this imbalance 
can cause instability in neural networks. Also, non-normalized data can significantly uh, decrease our training speed. However, there is another problem that can arise uh, even when normal, uh, I mean with normalized data. When we normalize a data set, we are normalizing the input data that will be passed to the network. Then the weights in our model uh, become uploaded over each epoch during, during training. So what will happen if during training one of the weights ends up being drastically larger than the other weights? Well, this large weight will then cause the output from its uh, corresponding neuron to be extremely large and this imbalance will again continue to cascade to the network uh, causing instability. And this is why we need to apply batch normalization to layers within our network. When applying batch norm to a layer, the uh, first thing that batch norm does is uh, that uh, it's normal, uh, it normalizes the output from the activation function. After normalizing the output from the activation fun function, uh, batch norm then multiplies uh, uh, this normalized output by some arbitrary param parameter and then adds another arbitrary parameter to this resulting product. This calculation uh, with the two arbitrary parameters sets a new standard deviation and mean for the data. These four parameters are uh, trainable, meaning that they uh, they also will be uh, become optimized during the training process. And this addition to the uh, addition of the batch norm can uh, greatly increase the speed and accuracy of our model. So when we apply standard normalization, the mean and standard deviation values are calculated with respect to the entire dataset. On the other hand, with batch norm, the mean and standard de deviation values are calculated with respect to the batch. Now we learn the ba basic theory behind batch normalization. So let's see now how we can apply a batch norm in Python. For our experiment, we are going to build the LANET5 model. The main goal of LANET5 was to recognize handwritten digits. It was invented way back in uh, 1998 and it was the first uh, convolutional neural network. This network takes uh, 30, uh, 32 by 32 grayscale images as an input. Uh, so to train the model we are going to use the fashion MNIST dataset which consists of 10 classes. Uh, and for our experiment, we are going to create two networks. First, we are going to train the first model without batch normalization, and for the second model, we are going to apply the batch normalization. And our goal is to train uh, these two models and then compare their accuracy in order to see which one uh, performed better. So, let's begin without uh, with our experiment. First, we need to import necessary libraries, and then we will define variable devices, which will store CPU or GPU depending on uh, what we are training on. And the next step is to download the fashion and list for training and uh, validation. So after we downloaded our data set. Uh, we need to apply function transform.normalize and this function will uh, transform our data so let's type transforms.normalize Here we, we will specify our mean and our standard 
deviation. Okay, uh, so as we already explained, this function transform dot normalize uh, will uh, normalize our, our data. So inside the function, we first we normalize uh, the data by dividing uh, maximum pixel value in our image, uh, dividing each pixel with the maximum value of, of the pixel. And that, and in that way, uh, we will uh, normalize our data data set to be in range uh, from zero to one. And then uh, we can apply standardization process. Uh, and uh, we already explained uh, uh, we are st standardizing uh, each pixel value by calcul calculating z value. And z is calculated uh, by subtracting uh, from each pixel. We subtract the mean, and then dividing that with the standard deviation. And in this case, we specify that mean and standard deviation are equal to 0 0.5. So let's say that maximum value is 1, 1 minus 0. Uh, point 0.5 is 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 is 1 and let's say the minimum minimum value is 0 0 minus 0 0.5 is minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 5 it will be minus 1 so in that way we standardize our data set uh, to be in range from uh, minus 1 to 1 and uh, we already explained that uh, our goal here is to uh, show you difference uh, between training with data normalization and without data normalization. So we will create two models. First model uh, is model where uh, normalization and batch normalization is applied and uh, the second model is a uh, model where neither of the neither of them is applied uh, so the next step is to extract one batch from the tennis set just to check the shape of our images and here here we can see that we have uh, we have images of 32 by 32 uh, one channel channels that mean that it is a grayscale image and we also have 64 labels uh, okay and now here we can see our two models first model is called planet 5 and this is standard model where batch numbers where we didn't apply batch normalization so this is our planet 5 norm model where we uh, where we're going to apply the batch normalization. So know that uh, our data are already normalized. Uh, so input data are already normalized, and uh, this is the same model as the, as the previous one without batch normalization. So we have a con convolutional layer, ReLU, and ma max pooling, and here we are going going to apply batch normalization using this function batch norm 2d we're using 2d because uh, here we are dealing with images and inside the brackets we need to uh, put uh, the input features to our uh, batch no normalization and uh, this is the same number as the output feature in the convolutional layer. So, output feature in the, in a convolutional layer will be the same uh, same number of feature we put in the batch normalization. And note that uh, note that uh, you can use batch norm uh, multiple times. Uh, 
but here for our experiment uh, we will use just one batch normalization in the uh, convolution layer and other one here in the linear layer only now uh, we use batch norm 1d because this is the flatten this is the vector and we just need one d dimension and also number of output features in the linear layer will be number of input features in our uh, batch norm layer and now when we define our two models we just need to uh, call the model and uh, set it to work uh, on the device that we defined in the beginning and here we defining our optimizer and criterion and also we define the uh, schedule object uh, in our previous post we, we already explained uh, what is uh, learning late uh, s scheduling uh, this is uh, so we here we, s we specified the learning rate to the initial le learning rate to be equal to 0 0.001 and uh, we using schedule to change the, the learning rate during the training process uh, here we using method step learning rate uh, and we uh, as a parameter we specified uh, step size and g gamma factor here the step size is equal to 5 and gamma is equal to 0 0.1 so uh, this means that uh, every 5 epoch we are going to change our initial learning rate for uh, this gamma factor so our initial learning rate is 0 0.001 and after 5 epochs it will be uh, 0 0.0001 okay and after that we just need to train our model here we specify the, the uh, number of epochs as 30 so we will go and train for thir 30 epochs and okay let's run this and see what result we will get as you can see, we achieved the, uh, the validation accuracy of almost 86.5% with the model where batch normalization was not applied. This is pretty good uh, result, especially because uh, training accu accuracy tends uh, to increase if we uh, continue training for more epochs. However, on the other hand, uh, the model where batch normalization was, was applied achieved a validation accuracy of almost 19% and that is 3% improvement compared with the model without batch norm. Also, the batch norm model has much faster convergence. Uh, that means that it reaches minimum much faster than the model without batch norm. Here we can see that at 10th epoch, here, uh, the model without batch norm achieved 85 let's say close to 85 percent accuracy while the batch norm model at the same epoch achieved uh, accuracy of 89 percent uh, so applying the uh, normalization and batch normalization can be very useful and it can and can help you to improve the performance of your model so that is it for this tutorial if you like this video, drop a like and subscribe to our channel. Bye.